Hollywood. It's the Tom Mikey Show. Who is this Tom guy? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted fella. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. As many of you know, the polls have closed in New Hampshire. The votes are being counted in both the Republican and the Democratic primaries. I have been uh, pretty consistent in who I think will not win. And let me tell you some of the people I think will will not, not only not win the New Hampshire primary, will not win, period. Okay? First of all, anybody from New York... That specifically means Rudy Giuliani. Hopefully this is the end of us having a look at that face. I mean, I'm not into guys, but come on. Guy looks like Herman Munster with no hair. Jesus. And uh, Hillary Clinton. Sorry, folks. I mean, if you ever wondered... If America had to choose between a black and a woman, you're about to guess the answer right now. America is so unwilling to vote for a woman, they'd even vote for a black guy. That's... Okay, I'm saying this because I've always believed this is a racist country that would never vote for a black guy. How much do people not like Hillary Clinton? They're going to vote for a black guy. Think about that. America's never voted for a black guy. But if Hillary Clinton is the most likely candidate, they're going to vote for a black guy to make sure she doesn't get in. Wow. Well, that's what's going to happen. By the way, it's not just that she's a woman. She represents New York, and America hates New York. Now, some of the other people who will absolutely not win, Fred Thompson will absolutely not win. No way. Bill Richardson, why are you wasting your time? Your money, <laughs> never going to happen. How did a Mexican guy get a name like Richardson anyway? Think about that. So, uh, yeah, he's not going to win. Dennis Kucinich, <laughs> again, wasting your time. Pal, give it up. And, of course, uh, there's been one candidate that I get calls about from every loon out there. Every loon out there calls me. They all sound like setup calls. I'm convinced there's a website or a blog or some kind of news group out there where people are encouraging people to call radio shows like this one and bring up this name. Because it's just, it's, it's always the same kind of phone call that sounds like this. Scott on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I uh, love your show. You're about the only thing on the radio worth listening to as far as I'm concerned. But uh, on the Ron Paul thing, I think you got it wrong. And I'm willing to bet you, which is a lot of money to me, 500 bucks. I'm willing to bet you 500 bucks that Ron Paul wins the New Hampshire primary. Fine. I'm in. Cool. What kind of odds do you think I could get on this in Vegas? I'm not laying any odds. You, it's a straight bet. Straight bet. 500 bucks. Ron Paul wins New Hampshire. I'm I'm a conspiracy theorist like you've never talked to. Before. Oh, believe me, talk radio is full of your kind, and no, I'd be no, no, happy no, no. to I'd be happy to bet money with every single one of you about Ron Paul because I could retire after that broadcast the day cool. after the primary. Cool. All right. Well, I I should have should have gone for the odds. I should have looked for the six to one odds, but I'll take it straight up. Five hundred bucks. Ron's gonna 
smoke New Hampshire. Well, we're going to be calling you, Scott, to remind you what I said. We're going to play. Absolutely. We're going to save. Drive down to the station and hand you my check for We're going to save this long. tape. We're going to save this tape of you calling in and making a fool of yourself. I, you know, I would do that if I was you. But I too Don't worry, will have we will. Tape. For, for all of posterity, when you have to hand me $500. It will never happen. Well, that's... It will Ron. never happen. Ron Paul will not win. Ron's the man, and he's going to win in New Hampshire. Beyond that, I, sure I, he I, is. I just can't tell, but... Uh, just keep saying it, because it's going to sound great when we're playing it back. You know, I'll get together in January, and I'll either uh, hand you the check for 500 or you'll be handing it to me. Well, I, I love your show, Tom, and uh, keep up the good work. Scott, thank you for the call. It's one 800 All right, that was from the Playboy Mansion back in December. I made that bet. And Scott called in, and he swore. He swore Ron Paul was going to win. We found Scott. Hi, Scott. Hey, Tom. <laughs> you you won the bet fair and square. I uh, I got a little overzealous, and uh, Ron hasn't gotten his message out there as much as necessary. So uh, I definitely lost the five hundred bucks. But, maybe maybe uh, he got his message out a little too much. You know, I the the media has been pretty rough on him, not letting him into the debates. Uh, oh my you know. God, he's been in several debates, and many people have heard him, and I've gotten many calls like yours. Yeah, you know, uh, certainly didn't go the way I thought. I, I thought Ron had a really good chance of pulling off New Hampshire. Based I, uh, on what? Well, it's a libertarian state, and he's the only real libertarian running right now. Hell, he's the only guy who can even spell Constitution. All the rest of the criminals running for president this year. Are, uh, By the I, way, I don't. I, I have you ever been to New Hampshire? Nope. I don't believe New Hampshire's a, a, a libertarian I, state. I believe it's a, it's a, one of those contrary states like Arizona uh, that just likes to be different from the rest of the country because they're a bunch of uh, self-hating, uh, unattractive, uh, snow-covered morons. Uh, who uh, this is the only time they get any attention is every four years when when they when they have this primary, and the rest of the time nobody gives a rat's ass about New Hampshire. I think New Hampshire used to be more of a libertarian. No, I don't think so. Uh, New Hampshire's in New England, which yeah. uh, if if any part of the United States appears to be like socialist, mm -hmm. it would be New England. Yeah, I think a bunch of Massachusetts uh, folks moved into New Hampshire and polluted it. But uh, either way, I, I think the only chance Ron's got is if he if he continues to get his message out there and you know let's let's no he has not one got thing. a chance one, he has not got one, okay, a chance because I I will I will I will even lay odds this time he cool. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take the odds we'll, we'll worry about it that at the end but uh, uh, so I'm going to take the odds on a on a three way Ron running as an independent on a you want to bet another five hundred dollars um you know I better take the odds and try and win back what I lost I uh, I had a good day in the stock market I was short the s p today so oh, very good. I, I at least uh paid for what what uh what i'm gonna have to pay you so yes I, I can i can live with that but uh but no i i the only chance ron has if he's got a chance at all is a three-way race the only chance he's got is if john mccain mitt romney and mike huckabee get on a plane like the big bopper and uh, uh like, like, gonna win. like buddy holly and richie valens they all get on one oh. plane Tom, only one of those guys is going to win the Republican nomination, okay? None of them are going to be Ron Paul. I, oh, I agree. Oh, I, I don't think Ron can win the Republican nomination. That's not what I was saying. What I was saying is, in a three-way race, Ron might be able to pull it off as an independent candidate, the way Perot ran. No. I, yeah, by the way, did Perot win? I, I don't remember. No, did he no win? of course not. But no. He could have if he hadn't... I, no. I like Perot, no, because every uh, third-party candidate is a loon. Well, I, I don't care Perot if it's Ralph loon, Nader I, I, or Ron Paul or whoever, George Wallace, go back as far as you want. They're all a bunch of loons. Honest, I don't understand why you're not a Ron Paul follower. Because for God's sakes, he'd eliminate the income tax for you. You'd get to 
keep bazillions of dollars each year if Ron Paul was elected president and took back... Because Ron Paul president. can't win. Because America is not a bunch of intellectuals who like going to Mensa meetings and libertarians... Libertarians... Well, first of all, I, I don't believe in tilting at windmills my whole life, okay? It makes no sense to constantly support candidates who will never, ever win. And no libertarian will win. And the reason no libertarian will ever be the president of the United States is because libertarians are like Mensa members, okay? Uh, they're very intellectual. They love to debate how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. And they love to theorize about what it would be like if we had no post office and no public school system and no public libraries. On, run, These things are run, never run. going to happen. And that's yeah, what real libertarians believe in, by the way. Well, Ron Paul is basically a Republican, but he does lean libertarian. No, he he was the libertarian candidate for president. Something years ago. That's not the point. The point is he was a member of and a representative of the Libertarian Party, and that is full of the kind of nut jobs I'm talking about. I, I, honestly, I, I honestly believe if you spent an hour listening to what Ron stands for, you would at least. I have heard the guy speak, but I'm telling you, he will never, ever come close to winning an election. He has as much chance of being president as Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and Ralph Nader. I'll give you the list. All these people who have run, they will never be the president. Cool. Based on that, what kind of odds will you give me on Ron being elected president in 2008? I will give you 10 to 1 odds today. You got it. No, I'll tell you what. Let me make it 100 to 1. Well... No, you know what? Let me make it a thousand to one. <laughs> well, you are going to have to write a check for a hundred hundred thousand dollars to Ron Paul if he wins the presidency, because that's what you said on the last broadcast. I, and I will, and okay. I'll write a five hundred thousand dollar check to you. Okay, okay. Well, you got it. Five five hundred bucks. I will bet you five. I will bet you five hundred thousand versus your five hundred. Got it. And uh, I will right. also donate a hundred thousand dollars to his election campaign All right. if he wins. Yes. Now, now, and now, here's the thing for people listening. And much as I bet you the five hundred dollars, yes, we want the five hundred dollars, but we want you to make that check out to the American Red Cross Ooh, specifically, wow. so we happy. can donate it to the uh, uh, to the uh, families who suffered from all of the wildfires here in Southern California. Do I send the check to you, and then you send it to Dean, them? Or? Yes, Dean will take. Dean will all tell right, you how we'll to do it, but don't here. make it out to me. Make it out to the American Red Cross. Got Dean it. will tell you what to do and how to do it. Now, if I win the five hundred thousand dollars, though, I'm not giving it to the Red Cross. <laughs> <laughs> I, you don't have to give it to the Red Cross, but believe me, I don't think we're going to have a problem over here. Well, you, you may not, but uh, I can't get now the, I can't again. Get those if, kind of odds in Vegas. if Mitt Romney, John McCain, and Mike Huckabee get on a plane together, I'm going to be quaking in my boots. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm serious though. You, I, I can't believe that a, that a businessman like you, a capitalist like you doesn't see a gigantic difference between Ron and all the rest of the criminals that are running for office. Well, first of all, the others are not criminals, okay? They're, 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 they're merely... They're paid for? Well, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, all right, let's take Barack Obama specifically. They're who, all owned. Who bought Barack Obama? I, I don't know. Who, well, why who, do you who say knows? that? You just make this blanket no, statement. No, but that, all of them are. All of them are. No, I don't know. All of them are. You're just a. You you admitted to be one of the yes, being one of the I biggest conspiracy, conspiracy theorists theory. out there, and you just uh, you just proved it. I, I am a conspiracy theorist. Absolutely, I could I could actually pick out the most widespread conspiracy going on in America today, and not only that, I could get you to agree with me. No, no, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. Oh, I, I guarantee no, you, you I couldn't. Because I've heard no, you on the air. No, couldn't do it. Really? What's no. the What's the one thing? You still there? Yeah, I oh, am. Okay, okay. Here's Here's the conspiracy, and I know you agree with me on this because I've heard you on the air. What is the most heinous thing that has been done to a majority of males in the United States of America over the last forty years? They had to watch Pam Oliver do sideline interviews for that's, Fox NFL coverage. That's funny, but uh, what is what is the the thing that that happened un, un, uh, unwittingly to the majority of males in America over the last forty or fifty years? The last uh, you're talking about circumcision. Yes, I oh, am. Here he is. The, it's the circum big circumcision debate. 
But, dude, I know you agree with me on this. I know you're pissed. All I know is that Ron Paul is going to be beaten by more than a foreskin in this election. <laughs> but now, hang on a second. Hang on a second, Scott, because I have Adam here. Adam, what did you want to say to Scott? Hey, what's going on, man? How much? Um, <clears throat> I don't proclaim to know much about any candidate, but I could get a pamphlet from the candidate that I thought I wanted to win and read things about him on the radio, like saying that the other uh, candidates are criminals and stuff like that, but not have anything to back it up, so I don't know. I don't know why you're even talking to this guy. Plus, I'm from Massachusetts, and this guy's obviously never been in New Hampshire, because no one in New Hampshire is going to vote for Ron Paul. <laughs> well, nine, I think 8% of them voted for Ron Paul as yes. it stands right now. And 7% and voted for Batman, by the way. <laughs> hey, he's only one point behind Giuliani, and that's Giuliani. Oh, come on. Not win the New only Hampshire people either. who thought Giuliani was going to win were those, the yutzes in New York who write these political columns, and uh, you know, since all the magazines and TV networks are based in New York, they all believe their own hype. Nobody from New York is going to be president in our lifetime. Forget it. America I, hates New York. Bottom line, right end of story. That's I why Hillary right Clinton won't win. You guys still there? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Anyway, uh, 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 Dean will talk to you, and uh, Scott, you will uh, you will find out where to send your check and how to send it in. Uh, we will take that five hundred dollars you bet with me, and we will send it to the American Red Cross, uh, specifically to benefit the uh, victims of the wildfires here in Southern California. And thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. By the way, CNN has projected that uh, John McCain will win the Republican primary in New Hampshire, but New Hampshire is just a bunch of cranks, and doesn't really matter if uh, John McCain wins in New Hampshire. Absolutely not. I've spent time in New Hampshire. They're just a bunch of bitter old cranks. Seriously. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, I mean, New England is full of bitter old cranks, but they don't come any more bitter or old than the people in New Hampshire. Seriously. Jesus Christ. Just the way they try to lord it over everybody that the Red Sox finally won a goddamn World Series or two. Because they're just a bunch of bitter old cranks in New England. That's what they are. A bunch of drunken, self-hating, bitter old cranks. And here we are sitting there wringing our hands over who they're going to vote for in New Hampshire. What, what 100,000 people live in New Hampshire? Who lives in New Hampshire? And who cares about them anyway? Jesus. Give them credit, though, for not voting for Giuliani. <laughs> He's going down in flames. Yes, he is. Uh-huh. <laughs> Fill in your own joke there, okay? Because I almost stepped over the edge. <laughs> All my boys know where I was going, but I didn't go there. <laughs> but you're thinking about the same joke I'm thinking about, right? <laughs> you are, aren't you? <laughs> You are a filthy son of a bitch. You listening to the radio. You were thinking about the same joke I was. That's right. Anyway. Yes, uh, CNN projects John McCain is going to win. Another bitter old crank, by the way, at John McCain. Oh, he's a complete loon, Gary. He's a complete loon. And a bitter old crank and the perfect guy to lead the bitter old cranks. Does anybody really think John McCain will ever be the president of the United States? I just happen to believe, my opinion, of course, protected by the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. Uh, my opinion is that John McCain would, uh, yeah, let's, let's face it, the guy eventually, is, he's, a, he's, a, he's a powder keg. Eventually he would do something completely irresponsible, something crazy. Get that guy's finger anywhere near the button, it's going to get pressed. I'll tell you, all this coverage of all this, I, you know, I've done this. I One year I went to New Hampshire. I was sent by a radio station to cover the New Hampshire primaries. And I had to speak. You know, it's February and there's ice and snow and bitter old cranks all over the place. Ooh, who are the 12 people in Dixville Notch going to vote for? Oh, shut up. Who cares? 
756 bitter old cranks voted for Dennis Kucinich, by the way. <laughs> Very nice. Just amazing. Anyway, all right. So uh, we, we got the $500 coming to the American Red Cross. The polls are closed in New Hampshire. We generally don't talk about politics, but you know, we make some exceptions in an election year. We'll give you an opportunity to make any comments, including responding to any of the generalizations I made about New England, New Hampshire, Rudy Giuliani, New Yorkers going down in flames, and you know what I'm talking about. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I think I must do penance tonight for talking to you today. Because years ago I thought you were the seat of Satan. And, uh, and I've come around. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Anybody see John Stewart come back last night or Steve Colbert? Tell you what? They were pretty good. Without writers. They were pretty good. I got to give them credit. Some of these guys are not doing well without writers. These two did okay. Now, if you watch last night's Daily Show with John Stewart, it's clear they had to paste it together. Like they would do a segment, and it was clearly obviously had to stop down and think of the next bit or something. And the show was all choppy. It was like all these individual bits that were edited together. <laughs> so it wasn't a 30 minute show that just kind of hung together the way they normally do it, but you know, at least it was funny. And Colbert was pretty funny too. I give these guys credit, you know, because I, I ripped all the uh, TV personalities who uh, can't work without writers. These two did it. They were good. They were good. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing tonight, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing good. You know, my main bitch is these, these damn New Yorkers. You know, they, uh, they're pretty much holier than now when it comes down to the, uh, the political races. Well, every four years, you know, back, back when Mario Cuomo uh, had given a speech at the Democratic Convention back in the 80s, in 1988, everybody was convinced Mario Cuomo was going to be the Democratic candidate for president and he was going to win. The guy didn't even get close. He didn't even get close. Yeah, I mean... The, the, the New York, especially Hillary Clinton, I mean, we already had one Clinton in office, and don't get me wrong, the economy was up, everything was okay, but he was uh, kind of not with the sanctity of marriage, which I know you're not with that, but, you know, it's okay. But uh, Hillary's just, uh, she's stuck on herself, you know? I know. She is. And I just, I get tired of all of that. The New Yorkers are all like that. In fact, we have got a few New Yorkers where I uh, where I work, and they all they all act they all act like that. Oh yeah, you know? and they all tell you, oh yeah, Rudy Giuliani's gonna be the next president. Hillary Clinton's gonna be the next president. It's like these people are gonna find out what the rest of the country thinks of New York. Well, if Hillary Clinton becomes the president, they better have a very good vice president because I'm looking uh, I'm looking at all the other past. Uh, past things here and all i'm seeing in hillary clinton's future if she gets elected is assassination well I, how about the crying <laughs> yeah no you know she was crying right oh no i had no idea oh no listen to this story uh the story is on google from portsmouth new hampshire an exhausted hillary clinton fought back tears and her voice trembled with emotion on Monday as the strain of her damaged white house bid welled up and cracked her steely public face in one of her few moments in her years on the political stage that her inner feelings have been exposed, Clinton, eyes moist and reddened, was asked by Marianne Pernold, 64, how she managed to keep going every day. It's not easy, she said, and I could not do it if I just didn't passionately believe it was the right thing to do. I've had so many opportunities from this country, I just don't want us to fall backwards, she said as her voice dissolved into a whisper. Etc. Well, Etc. 
it, it sounds to me like her testosterone levels have finally dropped. I mean, did, <laughs> did she finally get that uh, that castration that she needed? <laughs> I mean, it, it, everybody knows in this world that, that Bill Clinton was only where he was at because of Hillary, because he was back or she was backing him, but she didn't have the right uh, equipment apparently, you know, downstairs. Oh. Uh -huh. To really? get the job done. Is that so? Okay. My personal opinion is if you vote Hillary Clinton in, we're going to be going to war once a month, at least. Every 28 days? Every 28 days, Tom. And you know, what the, you know what the, uh, the, how the saying goes, I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Not to sound like a chauvinist or nothing, but I just don't think she can get it done. Wow. You know, I would rather uh, I'd rather vote in the guy from Lethal Weapon Two than uh, than Hillary Clinton. Le Lethal Weapon Two? Who was in Lethal yeah, Weapon Two? Fred Thompson or something like that. The oh, Senate. Fred Thompson. Yeah. I thought you meant Mel Gibson. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, Fred Thompson sounds like a better candidate than Hillary Clinton. You're I don't you know. think so? It, I, Anything's got to be better than another Clinton in, in office. I don't really care about that. I just don't. I, first of all, I don't think America wants a woman in office. And secondly, I don't think they want a woman from New York in office. That's like your worst nightmare. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I want to talk first about the 167 pound nine. I don't buy that for a minute. No, I don't either. I think you've got to be druggly. You've got to be drunk and ugly to get her later on in the evening. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Let's go! It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. 1-800-5-800-TOM. <laughs> We're going to have your primary. The polls are closed and... People have things to say. Lots of things to say. Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, what's up? Not much. What's going on? How you doing? Doing great. Good. Uh, I just had a little input about the whole political uh, presidency race right now. All right. Give me a little input. I don't think... As George Michael ready. once said in a bathroom in Beverly Hills. Go ahead. I don't think uh, our country is ready to have a woman or an African American as president. Well, what do you mean we're not ready? How much preparation do we need? Um, I just don't think that uh, the people in this country are are gonna just just uh, like the whole ethnic thing about the African American. The whole uh, ethnic thing. Well, I mean, it was just you know in in sixty four we in nineteen sixty four we just basically cleared everything up and gave them you know their full rights and even at that like there's still the whole racial issue that the whole racial issue well what what issue is that just about them how you know the white people enslaved them and how you know in the south there's still some areas that well wouldn't people, wouldn't electing a black man president eliminate a lot of that I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know. Well, you know, think about it for a second. We'd have to try and don't you see. think don't there'd be a Don't you think there'd be a certain number of people who would say, you know, if we elected a black president, are there a certain number of people who would say, you know what, maybe a black man can grow up to be anything he wants to be. Maybe, maybe it's not as bad as it once was. That maybe it would be a good thing. That's true, and I don't think that you know it could be a good thing. But I just think there there's some crazy people out there that will you know say he did get elected president. I don't think you know. I don't want to say that he would get, you know, he might get assassinated. I don't know. But there is some crazy people out there that wouldn't stand for that. I do. I don't think it's a problem, but I just don't think there's people in this country that are ready for it. Well, if that if there's people who aren't ready for all kinds of things. People who are not ready for, uh, the, you name it, uh, Rudy Giuliani, who is Italian. Probably there's people not ready for that either. So what? I, I mean, I just, I just feel that there's too many people thinking that it has to be a white Christian, you know, Protestant person that has to be president. Well, if there were that many people who thought that way, that's who would win. I, I think you'd be uh, losing your cell phone there. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Camilo on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Great. 
Wow, who was that idiot before me? Uh, some guy. Some guy. I hope that's not the rest of America. I just want to say, I'm from New York. I was born in New York. I live in Boston. Let me, wait, wait, wait. it took 14 seconds for him to get it in. Yeah. Let's just point yeah. out that of all the places in America, there's only one place where people call in and get it in on the first 14 seconds where they're from. I'm, I'm totally delusional thinking that the rest of us are somehow impressed or that we care. <laughs> well, I just Let me assure you that outside of uh, New York or New Jersey or any place with a zip code that begins with one or zero, outside of that part of the world, nobody gives a rat's ass that you're from New York. We're not impressed. We don't care. Well, I just want to defend your, your actions by saying that I completely agree with you on being a complete idiot. I don't think he killed New York. He Disney-fied New York. He, he, you know, corporatized it. And New York has much more to, you know, offer than that. And yeah, New York was not corporate until Rudy Giuliani became the mayor, is what you're telling me? <laughs> I think he added a lot to it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So, so what was, how was it better before he was the mayor? It just had more spunk. It, has it had more, more spunk. spunk. Actually, it actually had an edge. So he's anti-spunk, and, and, and the pro-spunk uh, 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 constituency out there is not going to support him because he, he's anti-spunk. Well, he's just, you know, yeah, I mean, definitely he's been living off the 9-11, you know, that he was there, which really he wasn't really there. He didn't do much. You know, and he's been living, feeding off that like a parasite. He was uh, a fascist while he was in office. He was and a now fascist. He's trying to bring that to the U.S. He was a fat. I mean, like Mussolini was a fascist. I think so. Yeah, uh -huh. and he maybe he might be of the you know same ilk, same family perhaps. Who knows? Same family as Mussolini. Yeah, who was also uh, Italian. Uh, exactly. You're making a conspiracy theory as we speak here. Yeah, as you love it. And. um... You are actually, how about, how about Boston, you have the right Boston, to vote, I'm taking, huh? Boston lives always under the umbrella shadow of New York, and I think it's incredibly sad. And that's, you know, old Crankville Mecca right there, as you were putting it. I mean, New Hampshire, New Hampshire is like, you know, second sister to Boston. And Boston, I mean, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. Uh, you, I live there, and it's... Well, it's people in Boston are delusional. They call Boston the hub as if it's the center of the universe or something, and... Uh, you know, it's the hub of nothing. It's just not. It's the hub I mean, of self-hating, drunken... It's the hub of self-hating, drunken a-holes. Yes. Who oh love to God. beat the crap out of each other. That's what it's That's the hub of. That's putting it mildly. That's putting it mildly. I know what it is. Boston are, are sisters, I think, that way. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and uh, of course, New Hampshire is the place where all the bitter old cranks retire after they're done beating each other up in Boston. I guess, but there's not enough... There, I mean, there's not enough, you know, coastline there. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I'd say there's not enough I'd coastline there. Todd, you know, that's where they really go to. Uh, well, thank you for all this. It's been just wonderful. I appreciate the call. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. This is Scott on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Scott. Hey, Tom. What's going on, man? Not much. Hey, I'd like to I'd like to kiss Dino's ass first by giving him kudos for the hold music, man. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> was, my ears are bleeding a little bit, but that's cool. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Hey, I, I wanted to ask you what you thought of uh, what do you think of Kerry, man? I was watching the debate, and then I got on YouTube, and I was checking out. He's pretty much the only guy with any integrity, man. He hasn't been bought out by anybody, and he's he hasn't flip flopped on that, and he's he's been pretty consistent about not accepting money from any lobbyists so did you say carry oh, i'm sorry edwards man i'm sorry i'm oh, sorry. edwards yeah, I was thinking, wasn't he running with that guy a couple years ago <laughs> well yes i'm thinking to myself carry is he running again I, I i saw a bumper sticker today and it had the two of the the two of their names on there and i just got him confused but it, uh i was talking about edwards i, I apologize what do you what do you think of that guy do you think i mean as far i, I I was watching the debate, and I thought, you know, they really couldn't talk any smack about him. Uh, Obama was kind of an ass kisser and, you know, said that he he hadn't accepted any contributions from any uh, lobbyists. And then Hillary kind of busted him and said, well, somebody that sits on your cabinet is, does, you know, is a lobbyist. And so he got blown out of the water, and then, you know, Hillary was doing the whole health care reform when Bill was in office and she got bought out. It got, didn't she get a check for like 800 grand from somebody and, and she kind of let that go by the wayside? Oh, the Clintons are the biggest fundraisers uh, the last 20 years. Yeah, yeah. And I just, 
I just wonder what you thought of, uh, thought of Kerry, or uh, Edwards, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll put it this way. If if you can't even remember the guy's name, what chance does he have of winning? <laughs> I don't know. My sister's name is Carrie. I saw a bumper sticker with Car I don't know. I <laughs> prob probably not a great chance, but but I'm just I've just kind of jumped on in, if Edwards were the nominee, I'd support him uh, just because I'd support anybody whose name isn't George W. Bush and anybody who has never supported George W. Bush. Yeah, I, I agree. I, those I are the rules. The those are for me. Those I don't care who they are. Yeah. If they were never a supporter of George W. Bush, I will vote for. Them. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't go that. You know. Oh, I'm, I did. I mean, no, no, I agree with you on that. I'm saying when you I live in Texas. You may have voted for Bush at one time as governor no, or something, but no, no way. I'm uh, I'm know. not originally from here, man. I, I, oh. uh, I you know who I would support? Freddie Wilhite. Freddie Wilhite. Well, I can uh, I can give you a little Freddie Wilhite right now, as a matter of fact. I shot my wife in the stomach with thirty-eight. Why did he do this? She enticed me, and she ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. She's alive? Yeah. I think she's dead. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Will, on the Tom Likas show, hello. You know, Tom, after uh, listening to some of these last callers, I understand why you don't do politics very often. <laughs> yeah, you can see why we don't talk about politics. This is what you get. <laughs> you know, I, I don't get this Ron Paul guy. I mean, every time he opens his mouth about monetary policy, I just don't know how people can believe he can run our economy. Well, first of all, first of all, most monetary policy is handled by the Federal Reserve Bank, and the president has no say so of what the Federal Reserve Bank does. Well, so why even talk about it? Because his views are to uh, eliminate the gold standard and just kind of get rid of the Fed, because that's government and somewhere in the middle of keeping the economy stable. There's a little taxation, which he is utterly afraid of, and will stab anyone who believes in any sort of taxes. But the but the guy sees like inflation is the ultimate enemy. He doesn't recognize that it lowers uh, the price for exports, which leads to more of those. That it uh, that it lowers national debt because U.S. U.S. dollars worth less, so we can pay off debt more easily. And when I hear that, and he's speaking about it, and no one else is, maybe there's a reason. Maybe he's just a moron who's only running on clout. Well, uh, I mean, look, I, I understand some of the issues he's talking about. I just think the average American doesn't understand money or numbers, and they just, you know, their their ears glaze over when somebody starts talking about that stuff. Uh, but the average person doesn't understand how interest rates are set. They don't understand the difference between short-term interest rates and long-term interest rates and uh, why your MasterCard interest goes up or down or why your mortgage rates go up or down. They just don't get it. Of course. And I so mean, it's it's suicide to try to run for president and start talking about this stuff because the average American is, is just a moron. And you might as well just stick to all those emotional issues that get people's attention. I mean, the only people who even kind of understand that stuff are people my age, people in college. But, you know, that's the young vote. That's not reliable. And, you know, I can tell you right now, most of them are morons, too. Well, there right. you go. So uh, why don't we talk about politics very often? This is why. Thank you, Tom. Can you blow me up? Of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing great, Joe. I just wanted to know if uh, the past few callers you put on uh, on purpose to make yourself look better. Well, yes. For example, when I put you on the air, I knew I was going to look great. Yes, so, but we you, put you, you right to the top of the. In fact, you only held on a minute and a half to get on the air, and I knew true. that by putting you on the air, it was going to make me look good. And that is the way you, to run a radio show. That's right. I did exactly what I did to make myself look great. I took your call and put you up next. You're right. And you know, and you know what? And it look how good I look. Me. You're exactly. so stupid. I'm looking fantastic right now. You're looking, and you were at least smart enough to figure out that I was doing this and, and and the fact that I put you on the air proved your conspiracy theory yes I put stupid callers on the air to make me look smarter you're absolutely right so thank you very much for the minute we've had on the air together it's been great because I look a lot smarter now than I did a minute ago but I I think I've had enough our email address is my name it's Tom at Blow me up, Tom. .com. You see, 
These guys don't have as much experience as I do, and it shows. The Tom Likas Show.